Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So uh, I woke up and was very excited to do this video, but I was kind of worried. It's like, ah, oh, this feels like the one that I'm gonna have to edit. It's gonna take forever. So I'll just go review the trial of Magneto issue two, and then that was 27 minutes. <laughs> it's gonna take me like the whole day to edit it. So hopefully this one I can do in uh, one take. So I'll also share the pictures of uh, 4.99 at the. Uh, well, I'm not even gonna tell you where this is. Uh, if you are Mexican American, you grew up in the 1990s, you know exactly where this is. <laughs> it's the Selena statue on the waterfront in Corpus Christi. Uh, so thanks for sending uh, this picture. 4.99 and Impossible Stars, basically done being fulfilled. Uh, knife Hand Blind Spot. Uh, Kenneth is done with the main story, so this is ahead of schedule. Uh, Matt is on schedule with uh, Rock and Roll Ninja. And if you want to get Expendables Go to Hell, which is being printed right now. Uh, you can still uh, get on that by ordering it as an add-on to this. That doesn't count. That doesn't count for an edit. I just that was just like one word. Nope, that stays in. So, um, uh, Alan Moore. Um, it feels like this is from the 1990s. It's just this cringy thing where he's in the audience and then he's also on the stage, and it got shared very widely by SJWs, and it was just basically. Alan Moore being a proto SJW where he was like, well, if caring for people makes me uh, a liberal, then call me a liberal. It's like, okay, we get it. You like attention. <laughs> but anyway, I saw this from uh, Danny Lore and um, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So um, just to uh, uh, explain who Danny Lore is, uh, Danny Lore is a longtime friend of Vida Ayala. Vida Ayala is a, someone who got into the industry and got I remember like two or three years ago, I was like, Max Visaggio gets a new book deal every six weeks. This is unprecedented in the history of comics. Bruh. Bruh. Freaking Vita Ayala gets a new book deal like every week. Now, the book deal might literally just be do this one fill-in. But I mean, there is, there is Vita Ayala content in comic book stores every week. Not because of Vita's sales. Not because of Vita's talent. Vita cynically markets herself as queer and brown, sexuality and skin tone, and gender expression. Uh, Danny Lore has almost the same identity, also gay, also uh, non-gendered, uh, they, them, uh, also uh, uh, black. Um, so Danny Lore has an entire career based on getting Vita Ayala's overspill. Vita cannot possibly accept all of the jobs that uh, Vita is offered based on being queer and brown. So uh, Danny is also queer and brown. So Danny gets uh, Vita's overspill. Um, so uh, I guess in reaction to this, Alan Moore uh, giving advice about writing, Danny says, part of the thing about Alan Moore for me, then I had to read, I, when I saw this tweet yesterday, I had to read this sentence like, five times to understand what she was saying. The syntax is really off. So let me try to read it in the correct syntax. Part of the thing about Alan Moore for me then is not about his specific work, much of which I love. Okay, no, this is just horribly written. The syntax is off. The punctuation is off. A sentence is broken up into two parts for no reason. Part of the thing about Alan Moore for me then is not about his specific work, much of which I love is that it's difficult for me to approach his advice as someone to emulate. Yeah, this is just horribly written. Because BIPOC writers don't get to be that. No one is more, but no BIPOC readers get to be the hermit, the brilliant and frustrated oddity, without being treated as unprofessional. I can't suggest... This is ridiculous. Danny, we know you don't get work because you're an actually good writer. You get work because of Vita Ayala cannot handle everything Vita has ordered or offered. But come on, like this is ridiculously poorly written. No one is more, but no BIPOC writers get to be the hermit, the brilliant and frustrated oddity without being treated as unprofessional. I can't suggest listen to his advice to other writers because 50% chance if we do what he did, we get fired. And it just occurred to me this morning that this is part of the way I engage with his work. I can like it, but that's it. Okay, so I'm going to be real brusque with you, uh, Danny. You exist at a level of privilege that has never before occurred 
in the comic book industry. You have a massive amount of work, and you seem to be getting more every single week. Oh, let's say every single month. Handling the overspill for Vidayala, who markets themselves solely on their skin color and sexuality, as you do. This has never existed before, the level of privilege you operate in every single day. Now, usually, <laughs> when a BIPOC writer talks about, you know, the privilege of someone like Alan Moore, it's because they have so much more than them, no pun intended. But with Alan Moore, uh, Danny Lore seems to be shocked that uh, Alan has so much less than she does. Danny, you only write because Vita cannot write all the books that Vita's offered because of Vita's skin color and sexuality, which is how she markets himself. You are not in the same bracket as Alan, not remotely. If you go back and God damn, I miss, I miss, okay, I'm, I just said mishk. <laughs> no, I got, I'm going to be two hours of editing. Mishk stays in. God, I miss the, the AC turning on that stays in too. I miss comic book DB. You could sort by chronological and you would see the years of shit jobs of Alan Moore taking anything he could get because that's how you worked your way up in an industry. Alan Moore was a fucking janitor at a school. He took whatever he could get. There are old ass like British reprintings of Frank Miller Daredevil stories where Alan Moore gladly took the not very lofty job of writing a foreword for it. And I mean, he just writes the most epic essay imaginable. He was doing uh, freaking uh, comic strips about cats. He was doing anything he could good. He, that stays in. He, anything he could good. Fine, that stays in. No. Um, anything he could get. And it took years. It took a decade for him to get the space on a stage that you got in your second year in the industry. So shut the fuck up about, you know, uh, you know, uh, he doesn't get the, we don't get the luxuries he does. He, with his infinite imagination, could not imagine the level of privilege you exist in right now. Where you literally get handed assignments because your friend can't handle the amount that she's getting. And they said, oh, you know, they're pretty, they're both the gay, they're both the black, they're both the not the cis. Okay, so uh, v Vita's busy, you hand it to Danny. And Danny's saying, like, BIPOC people do not get to be like Alan. We have to be professional. Well, many of you are. But you aren't. You are not just an asterisk. What is, what is that thing you see in, like, college essays? There's the asterisk, but then there's, like, the cross thing. And then they have the two asterisk. You're the second asterisk. Vita is an asterisk. You're an asterisk to an asterisk. Literally, just take Alan Moore's name out your mouth. Because he's a writer and you aren't. This is ridiculous. Alan Moore, his entire career, didn't get to rely on anything but his talent and sales. You are the polar opposite of that. And he does not just get to do whatever. He gets to be a brilliant and frustrated oddity because he is. But he also turns in work on time. Works well with collaborators bases his pay and his expectations on getting hired on not just his uh, sales, but his recent sales. His, you know, <laughs> this is the other thing. The coughs stay in, the AC stays in, MISC stays in, everything stays in. It, <laughs> do you remember when SJWs hated him and he was like a bigot like three years ago? There's this weird thing with like Alan Moore and like Frank Miller. Where they'll like hate them for three years, not talk about them for three years, and then love them for three years. I guess this is like, yeah, I guess it was like they hate. Because like everything that SJW said about um, Alan Moore, like his last few years of working actively in the industry, it was like bigot, racist, homophobe, misogynist. Then they basically didn't talk about him for three years. And now they're bringing up these like cringy videos he made in the 1990s, you know, congratulating himself because, oh, it's, you know, he's, he was a proto-SJW. Kind of, yes, kind of no. Kind of misc. Um, 
But what he was the entire time was a writer, which you have never been. Danny, you are... I, I wouldn't even say you rise to the level of Make-A-Wish Kid. You're like the substitute Make-A-Wish Kid. You're a UNICEF kid. You're an asterisk. So don't tell me that you have to be a professional as a writer when you're not a writer. You're literally skin color sexuality substitute teacher. Oh, jeez. It's so much worse when you say it out loud like that. So anyway, hey, I don't have to edit this one. Knife Hand Blind Spot, Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel. Links are in the description. And now I'm going to go pack the goodie bags for Expendables Go to Hell. Now you might say, you've been saying that for two weeks. Well, I've been doing it for two weeks. It's a lot of work. But uh, I was going to be charged $35,000 to do this by the Fulfillment Center. So I'm going to do it. And uh, um, uh, so I'm going to uh, do that and then take breaks and edit the other video slowly over an entire day. Thanks for watching. Bye.